In this video, we're going to take a look at some of the rendering settings that you have in Adobe After Effects. In order to make a movie, you of course have to have some sort of animation that you've created. And I'm going to go up to Composition, Make Movie. That's also Control M. Now the render queue will come up, but the problem with the render queue in this version of After Effects is that it's really small because it's down here. So I always bring this up so it's a free floating window and I moved it over to the right screen and then brought it back over so I can really maximize it and see what's going on. I think that's really crucial. Now you'll see that when we made a movie what it did is it used some of the default settings for this render um, right now and the render settings the output is actually coming from the name of the um, composition so you'll see it says fading kaleidoscope 1 fading kaleidoscope 1.avi. So let's look at some of what the settings are here. First off, you've got the ability to view a quick um, overview of all the settings. It says quality best, resolution full, size 600 by 400, no proxies, and we'll find out what those are in a later video. And it says the start is 00, 0 and end 29, um, 29 because it's 30 frames long. It shows us our frame rate but we can actually click on where it says best settings and change some of these. So you'll see that we have many of the same options here. We can change our um, quality from best to draft. We can change our resolution so maybe we just want to render it at half resolution so we could have a quick render to see what it looks like but not have to render the entire animation full resolution if it takes a long time. And we have the ability to turn on effects or turn them off. Currently um, you'll see that it says current settings and that's something that is pretty common because we as animators start turning on effects and turning off effects and we forget that um, we don't want them on. So if you have current settings it shows a little bit more of what you see when you're working with your files beforehand. Um, if you turn that to all on then it will use all of the settings even for those effects that you have temporarily turned off which could get you in trouble. It will also do um, solo switches. So if you want all off, that means you won't have any um, footage items that are rendered all by themselves. And then you have some other things such as OpenGL Renderer if you're using 3D options, and then frame rates and other things. You can also set the start and end. So if you only wanted to render maybe 15 seconds of that particular animation, you could. I'm going to go ahead and keep it exactly where it is and hit OK. Now the next bit of settings is about the output module which is the type of file that we're using. If we click on that you'll see that we'll come up with um, a lot of different settings here. And the very first one is our format. Right now we're using the video for Windows which is the AVI format and you'll see over on format options it shows me that I'm not using any compression. But we can click on that and we can choose any of the different codecs such as we could use the DivX codex if we wanted to, or codec, and hit OK, and you'll see it now says DivX up here. We can change the way that we're using our channels. Right now we could render RGB or alpha, but we can't do both, and that's because it's a limitation of this particular codec. If we go back to our Cineform HD codec, let's see what that is, then we could even do our alpha channel. And that's kind of an interesting codec. I've never actually used it, but who knows? Um, we also have, of course, uncompressed, which is no compression. And this will create a ginormous file, a really large file. So you just need to be aware that there should be some sort of compression going on. Now, we also have all the different types of compression, like Windows Media, as well as QuickTime Movies. And I should point out that there's a really nice compression in QuickTime Movie, which is the animation compression. Now, there's a lot of different compression formats, but the animation compression, even at 75%, um, is an excellent quality codec. You can hardly tell any difference between it and lossless. And um, this is not a format that you would put out on the web, but it's just the stepping stone format for a lot of different types of projects. And uh, it's the type of format that I use for pretty much all of my pre-comp renders. And uh, I find it one of the most useful ones out there. 
Now, another um, thing that we can look at is, of course, other formats such as MPEG-2, as well as film strips and PIC sequences or PNG sequences or um, JPEG sequences. Now, of course, these will render a sequence of files rather than a video. So I'm going to go ahead and keep the video format for right now. Now, there's some other things that we can do. We can change the depth of color and we can change whether or not we have an alpha channel which is straight or pre-multiplied and we won't worry about that right now. Then we also have the ability to stretch this if we like. Now I do want to point out that what it does is it does um, render everything before it stretches it. So it will render it at 640 by 480 and then if we change it to 300 by 200 it will apply the stretch after it's been rendered. So um, it will increase the quality just a little bit. So we'll take that off. And of course, we can also output audio when we need to, and we can change those options. We can also crop, but I very rarely use that. So anyway, we click OK, and now you'll see that we've created um, our own new setting, but it says currently it's based upon lossless, and that's because there are modules that we have set up here, and we can choose any one as a default. And right now, because I have all these templates made up, I've just changed it and I can actually go to make template and make the settings that I just changed into a setting. So this is going to be my QuickTime Anim 75, which means this is going to be a QuickTime movie with the animation setting set to 75 quality. Click OK and you'll see that now it says QuickTime Anim 75 and that's a setting that I can use for other ones just by clicking on the output module and choosing that. Now I actually can set that as a default if I want in my preferences but I don't really need to worry about that right now. Anyway, we now have a movie that we're ready to render so what we can do is go ahead and start rendering it. And you'll see the progress of this render. Um, it will show you about how long it will take and about how much um, RAM it takes and eventually it will also show you um, about how large your file is. If you want to see the current render details, you can open up the triangle next to it and it will show you basically about how large it thinks the file size might be when it's done. Um, actually, I guess as it is currently, the estimated file size when it's done, which is going to be fairly large for this 30 second animation, how much free disk space we have, and what current disk that we're on. So you can see it's also going through all the different layers and figuring out which um, stage that it's in in the composition or in its mathematics. And you might see sometimes it will go to a particular layer and it will um, have something that takes a long time to render. And that will help you determine which effects are taking the longest to render. So in the future you might not want to use them or you might want to use one of the next um, little rendering methods that we have which is pre-comping and using um, proxies which is a later video. Anyway, if I do stop this you'll notice that it will actually save my file and it will set up a new unqueued um, animation for me to start. Again, all I have to do is click on that check mark and press render and what this has done is this has automatically updated the start and end for me so that it will start where I left off with the last animation. That way I could put the two animations together and I'll have um, the completed timeline. So that's the basics of creating animation. I do want to point out one last thing though which is kind of cool and that is you have the ability to add multiple output modules to your render queue. So if you wanted to render an AVI, a QuickTime movie, and a web video at the same time. You can do it all from one animation. All you have to do is go to Layer, I'm sorry, Composition, Add to Render Queue. Um, I might have to do something different. I think I need to have that selected. Add Output Module, yeah. I need to have the Output Module selected. Now I can add an Output Module and you'll see that it adds another Output Module to the bottom do it again and I can change the different settings so that if I wanted to output a series of Photoshop files output a QuickTime movie and output a Microsoft DV 
um, file, which is an AVI, at the same time. I could do it in one render process. And that is the conclusion of the rendering basics in After Effects.